Welcome to Self Love Portrait, a show that gives you a deeper look into a female's journey of self love, acceptance, body image, and personal growth. Join me for honest conversations with inspiring women about self care, healing, and dealing with the challenges of life. Trust me, you're not alone in this journey. I am your host, Didit Nissenbaum, a multimedia artist and a self-love portrait expert who have photographed and empowered dozens of women around the world so they can show up and build their own self-confidence and express their true essence. This is where you discover that loving yourself is not a selfish act, but it's actually the starting point of every healing journey. I invite you to listen, learn, and be inspired to love yourself more and taking care of your mind, body, and soul. Hello, ladies, and welcome to Self-Love Portrait, and thank you for joining me. In today's show, I'm having the amazing Sarah Diaz. Let's bring her on. I met Sarah a few weeks ago, and since then, we've been through so many deep, powerful, fun connections, situations, just adventures, um, inner worlds, outer worlds, you can say. And Sarah was brave enough to do the Naked Truth photography. It was a pleasure. I'm very grateful to know you and to connect with you. And thank you so much for trusting me. And welcome. <laughs> thank you, Edith. Um it was a pleasure to be part of this project. I actually think like everyone should just expose themselves to these situations when they feel in a safe environment because it brings you so much awareness about your challenges and mm -hmm. the little traumas really or things that you're not accepting about yourself. So it was really powerful. Thank you so much. Yay. Very glad you, you like that. So, Sarah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm a um, little wonder there in this world <laughs> right now, uh, trying to, to rebuild myself. Uh, so I'm originally coming from Spain, where I lived most of my life. But three years ago, I moved to Australia following um, my heart. Uh, following an inner voice saying that I had to move on and, you know, restart again and a little bit far away from home and by myself. So I listened to that. It's been a beautiful experience. I've grown lots and um, during this time. And now the journey continues because, you know, uh, becoming a yoga teacher has been also an emotional, spiritual, physical mm. journey of uh, self-love. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, mm. here I am living in a little paradise in Australia called Byron Bay and really happy with uh, myself at the moment. Beautiful. Yay. Um, okay, so let's dive in and I'm going to start with the questions. Um, first question is, what does self-love mean to you? Self-love uh, for me mainly means acceptance because it's really difficult to change some like really hardcore conditionings and you know behaviors and um, negative thoughts that we have. So I think the first part about self-love is accept that we have that part within ourselves that is uh, willing to be transformed but to give ourselves the time to you know bring practices and uh, people and circumstances that allow us to express a better version of ourselves mm -hmm. but everything starts by acknowledging where you are at the present moment and accepting that also dark side that we might all have yeah yeah definitely i really agree that self-love is also it starts with self-acceptance and we all have it's yin and yang we all have that we have both the darkness and the lightness um how do you practice self-love uh well there's several um things that i do and i'm learning to do because it's, sometimes i just get caught in the busy mind or daily routines and working and forgetting about, you know, giving that a space for yourself every day. But um, it can go from having like practices as yoga, meditation that 
keeps me more connected to myself or to be in connection with Nacha, going to the for a beach walk or just swimming in the ocean or just having a walk in a beautiful forest, whatever it is. But I try to somehow feel connected to nature too because uh, it just it just feels good and it's a healthy good. You know, it's not like a addictive, uh, long term you know, uh, yeah. destructive practice. Yeah. Yeah. And um, nature nurture. <laughs> totally. And then, well, probably I try to be surrounded by people that really um, give me positive, you know, um, interactions. Mm -hmm. And I feel supported, but also inspired by it. And that's a way to, you know, I allow myself to learn and and also self love might be repeating like positive sentence to myself when I just, you know, just do it. It doesn't matter. It's not because I have, I'm in a bad day or something, but just be grateful every day and repeat some positive thought to myself when I wake up. And yeah, that helped me to open like neuropaths in my brain that, you know, that just try, try to avoid to um, feed those thoughts that previously in my life I would be like, you know, rejecting parts of my body or thinking that I'm not enough or uh, comparing myself to others. And maybe just treat yourself as something that you really enjoy, like might be something simple, like you have your favorite oil or perfume or flowers at home or something that brings you to a space you feel blissful and and safe and happy and do a, a little thing like that at least every day yes beautiful it is so important the practices that we embracing ourselves in our new life or in a new way of like okay i'm going to take care of myself and i'm going to love myself more and just do some self-care practices and self-love how do you nourish your mind body soul the yoga practice i'm becoming a yoga teacher at the moment and <clears throat> I just found is the for me it's like the perfect alignment between body mind and soul and it's such an Asian wisdom that has been you know passed through generation for the last 2000 years it has so much knowledge that um, I feel you know it's something that I want to really in uh, integrate in my life Mm -hmm. And yeah, like nurture and and it's a lot. There's a lot of self love too because in yoga, the the ultimate goal is actually to connect with the divine, acknowledging that the divine is within you. So how are you gonna harm your own self, physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever, if you believe that you know God or whatever you call it, the universe, the higher consciousness or the sacred. It's within you. You start taking care of your body as a temple, as a body call too. Mm. So I found yoga, yeah, a really important tool to connect with my physical body and beyond. It's so true. And I also I discover yoga and I realize how much it helped me to just disconnect from all the, the monkey mind, the thoughts, the, the negativity, the things that were bothering me. And then when you do yoga, when you practice, it's just you and the divine. And it's one, and you understand the, the oneness, this feeling of just be, and I'm okay. Wherever I am, with what stage I am right now, I am, I'm good. All is good. All is well. Um, have you ever had issues with body image? For example, um, for me, I always thought that I need to look in a certain way to be loved. Or if I'm not the way uh, my friends are or the way that I'm supposed to be, I'm mean, of course not supposed to because each one has their own body, but it was always with comparing myself to others or um, didn't like the way my body shape. This is what I mean when I say issues with body image. Um, well, yeah, I think that it's really difficult. Like everybody somehow, I think we've, I had some kind of a insecure or it's just very few people that never had an insecure about their body image. Um, yeah, mainly because, um, 
you know, we are exposed continually to advertisement and the fashion industry, and it's it's a really high, you know, aspiration, <laughs> like supermodels and really thin and always perfect and makeup. And um, so we are exposed to that since a really early age. And I think that my mainly body issues were when I was a teenager. That mm -hmm. was probably the part that were more vulnerable. And we just, we haven't yet developed a lot of our inner strength or security. So, yeah, although I was always like kind of like a, let's say a popular girl in the school, you know, <laughs> like I couldn't say that my body was, um, I don't know, um, out of, um, you know, the standards. Um, but anyway, because I had a really beautiful image, like embodied to, you know, I, I, anyway, I had insecurities during that time for with certain parts of my body, like my breast or my legs, even being actually a super beautiful, having a beautiful shape. And we all have beautiful shapes, you know, but I was not fat at all, you know, I was, uh, but anyway, I would find something that it was not perfect and, and push myself, you know, and be very judgmental yeah. with central parts of my body that they were totally okay. And yeah, I guess it. that's why it's so important to support teenagers and let them see that, you know, fashion industry or advertising is not the reality. Yeah, being really um, supporting with them because it's a really vulnerable time in our lives. And from there, we can't develop yeah. issues farther yeah for sure in time peer pressure that you feel during that time you want to mm. feed in the, your group of friends so yeah i think adolescence is uh really crucial that you know they it just, can be very yeah, crucial just definitely. to tell them uh, if you have i don't know a nephew or a friend of a friend that they are in a, or even your daughter or whatever just remind them everywhere that they are just perfect the way they are and they're mm. gorgeous and they don't have to compare to anyone and give them tools to actually fight all these like you know information that they receive that that information is continuously telling them they're not good enough yes yes definitely um, it really relates to my next question, which is uh, growing up. So what struggles did you experience in relation to loving yourself? For example, body changes, comparing yourself to others. You know, we just growing up and suddenly we start to have uh, hair in places that we never had before. And the shape, our shape mm -hmm. is changing. I think in this case, the more challenging part for myself is being like um, the last maybe five years because I'm I'm 37 now and during the last seven years my body has changed and you know it's, it's not anymore this like 25 years old you know woman body mm -hmm. you know it changes and you know things you have start having wrinkles and I was starting to have my hair first gray hair and you know, things start to get a little bit <laughs> loose. <laughs> loose and, and look, anyway, we're still super young, but, you know, compared to, you know, a little bit early. And, and it feels like we have to be like this, like, you know, perfect 25 years old. And it's it's not real. So accepting my gray hair and my wrinkles and, uh, you know, seeing that my belly has changed. And it, you know, it's not looking or even my breast is not looking the same. Um, so it's accepting the changes that are happening. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, what else can we do? You know, we're not going to be of like... Course, uh, yeah. Um, this is why all the industry of anti-aging, but it's supposed to be pro-aging because it's going to happen anyway. So how we can uh, just accept it and yeah. enjoy from it? Well, there's a lot of people that go into surgery and all that. And I guess some of them will have their reasons to do it. But... Um, I'm not considering that, at least not at the moment in my life. It's been um, confronting to see, okay, well, you know, um, I'm growing, I'm getting older. I just have to accept all these parts because they're just going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a physical body, you know, it's meant yeah. to born, grew, and then decay and die. Yeah. So um it's just uh, it's been it's been really important to be more connected to cycles of life in during the cycles of mine uh even my moon cycle or you know accepting the cycles of life in nature also the seasons 
connecting to that kind of cycles also reminds you that you are in the same cycle mm, so yes uh, just accepting that you're gonna be uh your your physical body is gonna be changing and just taking the most of each season let's say because mm. of course all the we you are know, experience seasons. and um strength and knowledge and confidence that i have now i didn't have it at all when i had beautiful you know, fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On it, all in its place, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it would be it would be really unrealistic to think that it's not changing. And I said, change change is uh, been one of the mainly things I've been facing yeah. in the last years. Hmm. And in what ways you think you can give yourself more love? Hmm. Probably, I think mentally it's really important too because we might have like, you know, healthy practices with our diet or exercising or even doing things like meditation or Pilates or I don't know, whatever, like aerobic, anyway, anything you choose to move your body and feel healthy and strong. But then we have to be very aware of our minds and observe our oh, thoughts mm-hmm. because mentally we can be very self-destructive and, you know, set lots of crap to ourselves. And actually, one of the things I also learn a lot of when I start dipping into yoga is that um, thoughts create reality, not only what you do or what you say, also what you think, that oh, energy, that vibration, yeah, um, creates reality anyway. So probably if, if for myself, I will, I'm going to try to be much more aware about what I thought or what, what I said to myself. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's and, so important. And we tend to forget. We tend to like take yeah. gra- for granted. Because normally everybody says to me, oh, you know, like they give you, I don't know, people that surround me they try to be people that loves me or you know like it's positive and and... so i receive good feedback from the outside i'm trying to do you know good practices that help me but then inside there's still lots of work to do and um yeah Yeah, i think that would be how can i give you my more self-love and it's going to be through what i think about myself Mm. being really really careful about what I say. Be more lovable and compassionate yeah. to yourself with your thoughts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I agree because sometimes I remember I used to say or like think to myself, oh, shit, why did I do it? Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not this. And then I'm like, wait, wait, why do I think about this way? And one of the practices that I found is to think in my mind as I'm talking to a little girl. How are you feeling right now? What do you want to do? Because it's so easy for us to be so compassionate and loving towards kids or dogs in my case. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, how I can really be so uh, harsh with myself in my mind and so soft with others outside and how I can bring in this softness. And it's really practicing talking to my inner child that really helped me to find this softness also in my mind as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we're going to discuss a little bit about the Naked Truth photo shoot. And I really want to know how did you feel before the Naked Truth photo shoot? And if you had any doubts or fears about it? It was awesome. <laughs> Amazing experience. Um, before I felt nervous, nervous. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure about it how it was going to be and then i well i felt nervous like one hour before but then oh my god now i'm gonna be naked in front of you know a friend but we met like three weeks ago and (laughs) it's like although it's been like a really deep connection you anyway like feel like a little bit yeah overexposed and uh uh, is this gonna be again the thoughts you know i'm gonna be good enough for these maybe you know the photos are not gonna be good because i'm not gonna do it well so Mm. a little bit of a self-doubt and insecurity and nervous um but then you did a really great job um like um making the environment and the safe and make me feel comfortable and bringing memories and things that 
you know, make me feel happy and peaceful and mm. content. Um, so that helped me to relax and, and trust. And yeah, and later on, I just got, you know, into it. Yeah. So, and it, it, it was a journey and I went through parts of, you know, more sad and releasing and crying and becoming aware of what I've been doing to certain parts of my body, how mm. I've been rejecting them. But once you've done that, also moving to a part of uh, more like dancing and expressing and being authentic and uh, be yourself. So, yeah, it's uh, that part of being witness and, you know, in front of the camera that makes you also the main character or, you know, the main actor of your life. Um, yes. It feel, yeah, it feel really good. And um, I, yeah, I really enjoy it. Hmm. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah, I really felt that the way we started the this journey was a lot of emotions came up. Um, also sadness and like, I don't know if it was sadness and fears together and just like, okay, I'm doing it and surrendering that. And then it just evolved and evolved and changed and with the songs and everything. What did you feel during the, the photo shoot? Like the feelings you had? Um, well, I went from a little bit of, uh, yeah, self-doubt and I just started crying at the beginning because I felt like a little bit overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Um, then I also went through a little bit of guilt and, um, sadness, mm -hmm. you know, when we were accepting like each part of the body and, um, I kind of same story to so certain parts of my body that. You know, it was a mix of, uh, you know, when you do something wrong and you would say sorry, but you feel so bad and um, that guilt, you know, that uh, we have. Yeah. But I after that releasing that. that, I actually feel really free. Mm. And I was totally okay to get naked in front of you. I felt safe, not, uh, not being judged which I think is uh, very important in this case. Definitely. And um, yeah, I feel really liberated too. Yay. I had a part where I just express myself through movement and um, some like dancing movements and all that. And it's trying to express my sensuality. And I close my eyes because, you know, just like it felt easier to connect and Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, I just felt really, yeah, liberated and I was releasing lots of tension and mm. allowing myself just to be. Yeah. And so um, how did you feel after the photo shoot? Tired. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but yeah, I have to say that. <laughs> if you're doing that, then make sure you can go to bed early that day <laughs> because uh, it was really tiring. But that's good because it means that it actually there was lots of things happening that happening yeah. and that's what we want. And, you know, it's it was like a, yeah, a whole journey through different emotions and that makes us a little bit exhausted. Yeah. Um, but it was a good tired, tired yeah. mode. Um, yeah. Like after a good sex. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Remember my last uh, posture was like, you know, I had just had an <laughs> orgasm. I was just lying down in bed. Um, <sighs> but it's not even through sex. It's just even, it's uh, only through, you know, just... Uh, making love with yourself. Yeah, making love with yourself. And um, yeah, just loving every single cell of your body and, yes uh, um yeah and i felt was released and um uh, yeah and happy happy mm. to allow myself to have this opportunity and um yeah and i think there are gonna be some very cool pictures there i'm waiting to oh, see yeah, soon for sure for sure soon soon soon, soon. <laughs> <laughs> um what have you learned about yourself from being photographed um that I can be really sexy if I want. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> that I don't have to worry about that because it's within myself. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, if I want to bring it out, um, 
I it's have found there. authentic sensuality that I can uh, express. Also, you're Spanish girl. You can, <laughs> you can, you cannot be not sexy. You know? <laughs> no, I mean, and it's it's just uh, yeah, it's just sensuality. It hasn't to be like a sexuality that we've shown by porn industry or you know, it's just moving your body and feminine. express yeah, and express your feminine yeah. through movement and uh, just like by a look or or, or like your just your the way you, you know, you, your presence. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we can be really sensual even in a stillness. So, yeah, that was... Uh, That's beautiful. Um, did you discover something new about yourself during the photo shoot? Yeah, I thought I was pretty okay with my body at this stage of my life. And then we went through this journey. And no, actually, I had to really push myself to open my eyes and say, oh, no, maybe I just like look at my legs or my belly. And I think it's, uh, oh, it doesn't look good on pictures. So I maybe just cut this part of my body from a picture because it doesn't look that well. Um Yeah, so I think I was pretty okay. But once you start, you know, digging and scratching a little bit the surface, I realized I had still, you know, issues rejecting certain parts of my body. Mm. And I learned that and now I'm more aware. And thank you for that. You can love your parts more and more. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) It's really, it's my pleasure. And it's, I think it's also my mission to show you that you can give yourself unconditional love. Yeah, definitely. I told you, your body loves you and is asking you to love him too. Uh, what was your favorite part of the photo shoot? Oh, there were a few of them. I really liked um, when we start playing music, mm. uh, our like favorite songs. Yes. Because, yeah, I, because I choose music from that I really like th- throughout my life it was like I don't know coming back to different phases of my life and um, also kind of telling a little bit my story to you through music Mm -hmm. and that helped me to really connect uh, with you and present myself it was like an introduction it Mm. helped me to the music it helped me to introduce myself to you know the observer that is you yeah um and then when we when when I got completely naked, then probably the last part when yeah, like you asked me to express whatever I don't remember right now what was the intention, but it's when I I think I wanted to express a little bit more like my sensuality and I just let it go and flow with movement. That was really powerful. Mm, so definitely. And for me to witness that it was very powerful as well. I felt like I'm with you in this movement, in the releasing and just letting go and surrender, surrender the, the flow, the movement, the, the sound. It was very powerful. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> um, did you feel connected to yourself? Did you observe your feelings and emotions more than usual? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I did. Um I feel, but I mean, you're in a very vulnerable place at the same time. Um, so in that vulnerability, it's it's easy to touch emotions and uh, feelings that are gonna coming up. So it's important to be ready that you know they're gonna come and yeah. there's no one judging you, and they just come and go. You know, their emotions they're not supposed to get stuck. They're they're supposed to. Just pass through and move on. Mm-hmm. So in this photo shoot, also you have to think about accept those emotions to come up and let them pass through you and move on to the next uh, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> thing and get a start like thinking, oh, I will start crying at the beginning because, you know, we started and I said, you didn't even start. I lay down on the bed. We didn't do anything. And suddenly I saw myself crying. It was like, if I would have got stuck to that feeling of being overwhelmed, yeah, then I, I would be like completely mm-hmm. paralyzed the rest of them. So I yeah. said, this emotion is coming. I'm overwhelmed. I'm just going to cry. <laughs> and I cried for 30 seconds. And then it was, yeah. And yeah. then I felt better and we could move on. Mm-hmm. So let the emotion pass through you. Definitely. Definitely. That is also a very good advice. And yeah, I remember um, we, I saw you a little bit 
nervous and then we did this opening meditation and then you start to cry and the moment I start to put your songs you're like woohoo <laughs> okay <laughs> it really shifted your vibration yeah. and took you and it's like when we were kids like like no nah, I don't want it then you cry and they're like yay what is that ice cream cool <laughs> whatever you know a new toy <laughs> so it's really to connect your inner child mm. and just let the emotions flow through you Yeah, that's um, why it's also a little bit tired because you go through a lot of things in a very short time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, why do you think self-love is important? Well, I think this is something that lots of people say or if I've read many times, but, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a um, basic thing to understand in life that is there's no way we can love anyone or love our planet or, you know, Um, give love to others if we do not start loving ourselves like love is a flow an overflow of our self-love that we give that extra love mm. that we have to others and it's like that because once we love ourselves which is not that easy but that's the path we are that overflow is so huge we have unconditional love for everyone yes. every single yeah. being in this planet but it has to be an overflow from us to outside yes it starts from within and to go yeah. outside yeah definitely i agree what do you wish you had known when you were a little girl um, that things aren't going to be as i planned <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that, that's for sure <laughs> Life has plans for us. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, just probably like be more aware about trusting what life brings you and not try to control that much. We can control certain parts of, you know, of our life. So, you know, have intentions and fight for them and, you know, put our energy into them. But there might be lots of things that lots of them that are going to be the way we want. And be flexible to accept them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And when we are children, normally, you know, which is, I want these and we want things to be the way mm -hmm. we expect. And um, it's just, it's just through experience that we, we learn that, I think. But yeah. Yeah. No, but that's good. That really saying like, if you want something, get it. But sometimes you want something and it's going to be different than what you want. And it's true and it's important to accept it and know it and be open for opportunities and other things that we've never imagined before. Like I have never imagined I'm going to live in Australia and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, life has good, uh, good opportunities for, for us. So just see changes and see obstacles as a very positive things and that will open other doors for us. Great thing to know when we are young. What advice do you want to give to yourself right now? That's a hard question <laughs> because we're actually pretty good giving up that advice to others, but no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're also going to give advice to others, but first of all, to you. <laughs> uh, well, my advice to myself, it would be like, keep up, girl, you're in the right track. Woohoo! <laughs> That's true. Just write it down on your wall, you know? <laughs> Or like when you wake up, you, that's what you see. Keep up, girl. You're on the right track. <laughs> I like that. And do you have any advice for other women? Um, tune in, listen to yourself and just choose the way you need to do things. Like each one is completely unique and different. Mm. So, I mean, you can listen to others and they, you might receive very listen, good... Listen, it's okay, yeah. but not... Like, yeah, but, get it as a, for granted. And that but this yeah, is... the first thing is to really connect with your heart and mm -hmm. listen to what you, you know, because we all somehow know. We just forget and we don't listen. So that would be my first advice to other women, just to listen to their hearts and choose what they think is best for them and being honest also with themselves. And then, of course, receive inspiring ideas and um, be surrounded by other people that might help them in mm -hmm. their way with other advices but yeah Connect tuning themselves. in with themselves I mm -hmm. think is the most important step uh -huh. I agree totally uh, amazing thank you so much You're I'm so glad that we did it and that you enjoyed 
And, you know, it's not just about the enjoyment, but I feel like it was a very blissful experience with so many emotions and releasing and let it go and embracing yourself as who you are. And thank you for being you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I appreciate your time and energy. I'll be back next week with another inspiring episode. And if you want to learn about the Naked Truth photo ceremony and find out more about Self-Love Portrait online course, you can see all the information below this podcast. Thank you, friends, and have a magical week.